everyone. Good morning and thanks for joining us for the Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Stacy, and we are uh, coming to you from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. Now, if you have any questions during our program, kiddos, make sure that you talk to your grown-ups because data rates may apply. But you can text us at the number right down here. It's 562-286-1838. Now, today we are going to go on an exploration to discover lots and lots of different things about animals. When, uh, what we're going to do to begin is watch a video. And what I want you to do during this video is look for shapes, look for colors, and I want you to see if you can count how many of each type of animal there is. Now, there's going to be a lot of them sometimes, so do your best. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, well, I hope you had a good time looking at all those animals. I saw so many different types of animals in all kinds of different shapes, colors, sizes, and even numbers. Now for our exploration, we are really gonna look at some numbers. So I hope that you are ready to count with me today. All right, let's start with a turtle. Oh, there it is. How many turtles do you see? If you said one, absolutely, this is a sea turtle. And this sea turtle is hanging out kind of by itself. Now, most of the time, sea, or, sea turtles really like to hang out by themselves. They might see some other animals out there, but they don't really hang out a lot with their buddy sea turtles. But every so often, you might see a few together. So that's why we have one sea turtle right here. Now, how did we even know that this was a sea turtle? Well, you may have seen some different parts on it that helped you know, like this. What is that? That's right, it's a shell. Sea turtles, as well as turtles that you would find on land and tortoises, they have this shell. Why do you think they have shells? What do shells do for sea turtles and tortoises and other turtles on land? It's a really important part of their body. The shell protects them. That's right, so the shell is really good protection because it is nice and hard. So that's a really good shell for, um, or a really good protection for our sea turtle friend. Now I want you to look inside here. Do you see one sea turtle in this exhibit? Hmm, I don't know. Can you find it? It might be hiding. Look over here. That's right, there's, thanks shark. <laughs> <laughs> There's a turtle right here. This is one of our olive ridley sea turtles here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And it looks like it's getting ready to swim. Is that turtle moving very fast? Not super fast. <laughs> very cool. Hi, sea turtle. All right, everyone. Oh, it's going to breathe. Excellent. So we got to check out one sea turtle. Awesome. Now let's see what we can find next. And we're going to count how many we see. Hmm, what's next? <gasps> what do you see there? Those are birds, that's right. These birds are called horned puffins. And you know, because right above the eye, 
is a little feather like this that looks like a horn. That's how they get their name. How many horn puffins do you see in this picture? If you're saying two, nice job. We have one and two, two horn puffins. Now horn puffins are found north, so kind of toward the top of the earth. And these are really cool animals. They have a lot in common with penguins, but penguins are found near the south part of the earth. So it's a little bit different. They kind of live in a different place. Now these puffins, take a look at that beak. That beak is not huge, right? But it's a really special beak that helps them catch their food. Now you might be wondering, what do they eat? Well, they like to eat fish. In fact, they eat lots and lots of little fish. And these little fish are pretty easy to catch when they hang out in schools. So all of these little fish hang out together in a big group that we call a school. And the birds actually dive into the water and swim underwater to catch these fish. And they've been known to catch 20 fish at one time. Can you imagine putting 20 fish in your mouth? That's pretty tough, especially when they're little like that. But they're so good at catching their, their food, the little fish, and their beaks are special just for that reason. So our really cool horn puffins, our two horn puffins, are great at catching, catching lots and lots of fish. All right, let's move on to our next one. What do these look like? Fish! Now these are not the fish that, um, that our puffins are going to eat because these clownfish are going to be found where it's nice and warm. Now how many clownfish do you see here? I see one, two, three. Three little clownfish. And these clownfish live in one little friend, the sea anemone. So all the little lines that you see there are tentacles from another animal called a sea anemone. Oh, there's a great picture of a sea anemone. And these sea anemones are animals. They look a little different because they don't have faces like fish do, but they are animals. In fact, that's its mouth. It has one mouth. So our little sea anemone friend here lives in the, um, in the bottom of the ocean. It sticks usually to rocks and things. And the clownfish call that sea anemone home because it's really good protection. Sea anemones are cousins of jellyfish. And just like jellies, they can sting. But our clownfish friends are covered in mucus. Does anybody know what mucus is? It's basically slime. And that mucus covers this, the uh, clownfish to protect it from the sea anemone. So our sea anemone friends don't sting the clownfish. And the clownfish find protection and any other fish that comes by is going to get stung. So it's really good for our clownfish friends. Now again, if you have any questions, go ahead and text them to us. The number is right here, 562-286-1838. All right, so now we found our three clownfish friends. I wonder what's next. Wow, what are those? You probably know. That's right, it's a jelly. In fact, this one here is called a moon jelly. Oh my gosh, I see four. Do you see four too? Right here, one, two, three, four. There's four little U's in the middle of the jelly. Those U's are their stomachs. Look at this. So I have my little jelly friend here. And my little jelly friend has four stomachs, just like the moon jelly here. One, two, three, four. Four. Excellent. Now, I do have a question coming in here. Oh, I actually have a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mary. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Excellent. So our jellyfish friends here have four stomachs. Now, you might be wondering why they need four stomachs. How many stomachs do we have? That's right, we only have one stomach. Sometimes I wish I had four so I can eat even more ice cream. But <laughs> our jellyfish friends have four stomachs because they catch a lot of little things and all those little things that they catch in their tentacles, as you can see down here, make their way to the very bottom in the middle and that's their mouth. 
and then it can go into their stomachs. So it's really cool to see some of our jellyfish friends having four stomachs. Oh, this is a great picture of a jelly with very long tentacles. Now it's really tough to see the stomachs on this one, but you can see all of those really long tentacles that they use to capture all of that delicious, tiny, tiny food that these jellies love to eat. Now here's another kind of jelly called a crystal jelly. It's actually a very small jelly, but you can see all of those tentacles used to catch all of the little food that they like to eat. Very cool, beautiful jelly friends. Okay, so we have done one turtle, two puffins, three clownfish, and four stomachs on a moon jelly. I wonder what's next. Let's check it out. Wow, look at all those sea stars. I see a lot of sea stars. In fact, all of the sea stars have five arms. Can you count with me? Let's try this one. One, two, three, four, five. That's right. Now I wonder if all sea stars have five arms. Shall we do this again? Let's try this one right here. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. So it looks like that one also has five arms. I even have a star model right here. How many arms do you see on this model? One, two, three, four, five. Cool. So a lot of sea stars out there actually have five arms. And uh, this is a good model. This one shows us exactly how many arms we see. Now sea stars are really, really cool. What do you think they're doing? Look at this picture. Yep, they're just kind of sitting there. But sea stars don't always just sit there. They actually can walk around too. Now they're maybe not the fastest walkers out there, but all of these sea stars that you see in here with the sea anemone friends that we've already learned about, all of those sea stars can walk from place to place and they might be looking for a place to hide. They might be looking for food too. So um, what's really cool is underneath them, they have lots and lots of little feet. And if you look here, this is actually a window. So it's really easy to see the underneath of a, a sea star. But underneath here, do you see all of those little dots? All of those little dots are their feet. And their feet are almost like little tiny suction cups. So they can stick to things like rocks and windows. And they also use them to walk around on the ocean floor. Very cool. All right, so now we know sea stars have five arms. Okay, well I think, oh, we have a couple more questions that just came in. Um, Avery asked, how can the anemone see its food? That's such a good question, Avery, because we found out that they don't have faces, right? Take a look. Does anybody see any eyes? I don't see any eyes either. Sea anemones don't have eyes and they actually don't even need to see their food. It's pretty interesting. Instead, if anything touches them, they close and then they bring the food from their tentacles into their mouth, just like that. So, whoop. so it's just kind of a, a reaction. So if you were to touch one, it would close. And if you were food, it would eat it. Since you're not food, it'll just open up again because it, it will uh, sense that you're not food. So they're pretty interesting. Great question. Okay, Giovi asked, uh, why was the tail of the clownfish flipped? Ooh, let's go back to this clownfish video. Take a look. It looks like it's a little flipped, right? Well, it's because this was a clownfish in action. This clownfish was actually swimming a little bit. And if you take a look at their tails, they look like little paddles and the paddles move side to side. And that's how they push themselves through the water when they're swimming. So this one here was probably in the middle of a side to side when the picture was taken. But good question. All right. And then we have uh, Miguelito who asked, do jellyfish sting? Yes, they do. In fact, you remember how we said that the sea anemone stings? Jellies and sea anemones are family, they're cousins. And so they do sting. These long tentacles here have stingers on them. And the stingers, um, are uh, they, they come out when you touch them. So if you were to touch the, the tentacle, the stingers would shoot out and then that would probably hurt. 
Now, not all jellies can hurt us as people because we have skin on our fingers that is good protection from a lot of things. So this moon jelly here is a kind of jelly that has a sting that's very, very small. It's really weak. And so when we touch them, you actually don't feel a sting. But if you were teeny tiny plankton food that they like to eat, then you would get stung. So that's a good question. Jellyfish do sting or sea jellies do sting, um, but we may not feel all of them. That being said, if you ever see a jelly and you don't know what kind it is, I probably wouldn't touch it. But here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we have a whole pool of moon jellies. And since we know they're moon jellies and that our skin protects us, you can actually touch them and feel what a jelly feels like. They're pretty interesting. All right, Elvis asks, are jellyfish dangerous? Um, and it depends on the jelly, Elvis. So we were saying that some stings are stronger and some are weaker, like our moon jelly friends here. So the, the stings that are really strong can be dangerous for people even. Um, but I think if you were food for a jelly, it would probably be dangerous altogether, so. Yes. All right. So it looks like we have a few more questions coming in. While we wait for those questions uh, to pop on over here, let's move on to our next number. Here it comes. Oh, very cool. These are called garden eels. How many garden eels do you see? Well, let's count them together. I see one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoop, there it is, <laughs> six. We have six garden eels. Oh, I feel like I'm in the way. So these six garden eels are really, really fun. They're actually eating. You can see their food floating around in the water and they're eating their food. Maybe we can rewind it so we can watch how they eat. Um, so I'm going to actually ask my friend Alicia, who is manning the computer. So she's the one who's helping us out with all of the, um, the pictures and the videos that we're seeing. We're going to see if she can rewind it a little bit so we can see them uh, eating again. There we go. So these garden eels, they bury themselves in the sand. And when they are scared or maybe a fish comes over them, they can completely go under the sand. Oh, there's actually a little one right here. It's a surprise eel. <laughs> so that shows you they can go all the way in the sand and come out when they want to eat or investigate. So our six little eels and a surprise eel <laughs> are right here for us to check out. Very cool. Now these eels are a lot of fun because they're, they're just kind of cute to watch. Um, but do you notice on their bodies, they have two dark spots. They have two, let's see. One, two, little dark spots. And those little dark spots, oh, this is a great picture. There we go. Those two little dark spots are kind of there to make it seem like they have eyes in their body, like this. Those eyes look bigger than this little eye right here. Plus, take a look at how far away they are from each other. So if you're a big animal, your eyes are going to be far away from each other. If you're a little animal, your eyes are going to be close. So this makes it seem like this eel is much, much bigger. It's a big animal. So that way, maybe a fish that sees it, medium-sized fish, won't try to eat it because it's going to say, oh, nope, that's too big for me. Moving on, I'll look for something else. So this is really a really good way to keep themselves protected, having pretend eyes, also called false eye spots. <laughs> Excellent. So these little eels are a lot of fun to watch, but they also have really cool parts of them that helps them survive out there in the ocean. Now, I think our next animal is going to be, oh, I see that we have some, pick, uh, some questions, actually. Let's go ahead and get to the questions here. We have Charlotte and Chloe asking, how starfish are born? That's a really good question, you two. So um, sea stars are interesting animals because they, uh, they actually um, kind of, let's see, they release <laughs> their eggs into the water. And then those little eggs will eventually hatch and they'll be teeny tiny where you can't even see them. And they're going to be floating around in the water until they get big enough to settle down on a rock. 
But even then, they're so little that we can't really see them. So that's one of the uh, interesting things about sea stars. They aren't really born. They more like hatch. <laughs> All right. And then we have John Francis asking, how many sea anemones live at AOP? Oh my gosh, that is a really tough question to answer. We have a lot, a lot of sea anemones. In fact, in this picture alone, I think I see five. We have the one over there that the fish is pointing to. Two, three, four, five. And that's in this one exhibit and just a small part of this exhibit. So a lot is probably my best guess. <laughs> And then we have, uh, what do starfish eat? Asking, um, asked by Elvis. Stars eat whatever they can catch. Remember how we said they're kind of slow moving? Um, so they're just going to crawl along the ocean floor. And if it's something they can catch, uh, like that seafood, they'll eat it. Now, most of the time what they're eating is stuff like shellfish. So uh, like a clam, because clams don't really move very fast and they have two shells and they hang out. Stars are strong enough that they can actually open up that shell, but they can't open it all the way. So they open it up just a little bit. And here's the interesting part. Some stars are known to make their stomachs come out of their body. And the stomach goes between the shells and it makes a clam smoothie. And then they suck the stomach and the food back inside their bodies. It's a little bit weird, but it totally works for them. I'm glad that we don't do that because pizza parties would be really weird. But it works for stars. It makes it a whole lot easier for them to eat their clam uh, food. And then Elvis, oh, we already did that question. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Okay, so let's move on to our next number. We just did six garden eels. Now it's time to look at a shark. Well, I only see one shark, but I do see a lot of fins on this shark. So let's count the number of fins together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right. Sharks have seven fins and these seven fins help them to swim. Now the fins on the top and the fins on the bottom give them stability. What that means is that when they swim, they can swim and be upright like this and swim because they're shaped like a football. And if you've ever seen a football, when you throw it in the air, it spins, it spirals like this. And that's what would happen to a shark if it didn't have any fins. So all of those fins make it so it doesn't spin and spiral like that. The side fins, these uh, two pectoral fins, the ones that almost would be like arms if they were to have arms, those are really, really great for steering. So they can turn right and left and uh, and make sure that they don't run into rocks in the ocean. That would be bad news for them. And then of course they have a tail and that tail is what pushes them through the water. So sharks have seven fins and a tail. Now watch how those tails move. What are they doing? Are they going up and down or are they going side to side? That's right, they're going side to side. And that movement side to side pushes them through the water Excellent job, everybody. So now we know that sharks have seven fins and a tail. Okay, let's move on to our next animal friend, and we are going to count arms. I have a feeling you might even know what we're talking about. That's right, here we are. This is an octopus. Now its name actually gives away a little bit about itself, but let's count how many arms an octopus has. Now it's really tough in this photo here, so let's use my little plushy friend. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's right. So octopuses have eight arms. In fact, octo means eight. So they have eight arms and these arms are used for all kinds of different things. What do you think an octopus would use their arms for? I want you to think for just a moment, why does an octopus have eight arms and what do they use them for? Hmm. Well, for one thing, you can actually see on the bottom of this octopus's arms, all of those little polka dots. All of those polka dots are suction cups. So they're really, really good at sticking to things. 
They might stick to rocks so they can walk around. So their arms are used for walking. They might stick to food to catch it. So their arms are used for catching food. So their arms can be used for lots of different things, right? Eight arms are really useful and octopuses are very strong and also quite smart. Okay. Oh my goodness. Take a look at this little one. So this little one right here, does it have eight arms too? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, this little baby even has eight arms. Basically, the babies look just like the grown-ups, but itty bitty. <laughs> All right, so we know octopus. They have eight arms that are used for sticking to things, for catching food, for walking around, lots of really good things. And you know what's really cool too? Their suction cups can even taste. So their arms are really, really useful. They don't have to lick something because they don't have a tongue like we do. <laughs> Instead, they use their suction cups to do the tasting. All right, now for nine, I'm going to walk over to my special camera. Let's take a look at the document camera and you will see here some shells. Check my math. Make sure that there are actually nine here. How many do you count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's right, there are nine shells here. Nine different kinds of shells. Now in the world, there are so many different kinds of shells, I don't think we could count them. But here on my camera, we have nine. And then last but not least, we have, oh, my little friends, number 10. Here we go. This here is a spider crab. Now, I said that this is a representative of 10. What do you think they have 10 of? They have 10 legs. That's right. Let's count them together. We might even have to rewind it. Let's see. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, <laughs> we're going to, we're going to re put that up there. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's right. Crabs have 10 legs. It's a little bit tough to see when it crouches down like that. So my friend Alicia had to restart the video again. Now we do have other videos of crabs too that it might be a little bit tougher to see their legs. But we know because our spider crab friend here helped us out that the crabbies have 10 legs. Now Valentina asked, what do garden eels eat? Garden eels eat mostly plankton. They're going to eat things that are small enough for their mouths to catch. So you can learn a lot about an animal by looking at their mouth. And you can see here, it's a pretty tiny mouth. It also has a pretty tiny body. So all of the food that it eats has to be small enough to fit. Most of the time, it's maybe somebody's leftovers that got shredded and just put into the water or plankton. So that's what garden eels eat. Jaslyn asked, why don't anemones eat clownfish? Oh, well, it's because clownfish trick the anemones. Remember that sea anemones don't have eyes, right? So they can't even really see that there's a fish there. The clownfish has mucus or slime on its body that actually matches the clownfish, or excuse me, the, the anemone. And so the anemone has no idea that the clownfish is even there. But then the clownfish helps out the anemone sometimes by giving them a little extra treat of food here and there, and it protects its anemones from things that might want to eat an anemone even, like a little crab or something. Um, Miguelito wants to know, do octopuses have sharp tentacles? Ooh, let's take a look at our octopus friend again. There we go. Take a look at those tentacles. If you look on the ends, they do look pretty sharp, don't they? Because they come to a point, but in fact, they're completely soft. In fact, for an octopus, really the only hard part of their body is their mouth and it's a beak like a bird and you find it in the very very middle between all of the arms so if my little stuffed animal friend here had a mouth it would be right down here between all of the arms and that's where its beak would be again that's the only hard part so all of the arms are wiggly squiggly and nice and soft
Good question. And it looks like we're just about running out of time, but I do have one more question here from Brandon. Why do spider crabs need so many eyes? Oh, spider crabs here, um, their eyes are actually right over here and it helps them to find where they are in the ocean. So they do have eyes to help them look around and see where they're going um, with their 10 legs. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We counted quite a few creatures. We had one turtle, two puffins, three clownfish, four moon jelly stomachs, five sea star arms, six garden eels eating, seven shark fins, eight octopus arms, nine shells, and 10 crab legs. Thanks again for joining us, everybody. If, uh, if you're interested, we're going to have another show coming up at one o'clock today, and that will be about our kelp forest. All right, thanks again, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.